go Wherever I see I'll remember Yo If you remember me Hello friends, welcome to 7 minute study In this video, I am going to talk about Specifications of tokens Specification of tokens is very important in order to design a compiler. We know that a lexical analyzer reads a source program character by character and produces a stream of tokens. So the token may be an identifier, a variable, a constant, an operator or a keyword. So regular expressions are used in order to specify these tokens. So what are regular expressions? Regular expressions are the kind of expressions which are used to generate a language. So in order to understand tokens, first we go through the components or certain concepts such as alphabets, strings, languages, regular expressions and then regular definitions. So what's an alphabet? An alphabet is a set of in symbols denoted by the uh, this sigma. All right, sigma equals to zero comma one defines a binary alphabet, and sigma equals to uh, zero. Uh, sorry, a, b, c, and so on till z. This set gen is a set of lower case letters. It's all inside a single letter. In a in case of a regular expression. All right. So what's a string? A string is a finite set of symbols generated from the sigma that is the input alphabet. If we have the input alphabet as 0, 1 that is the binary alphabet, the n strings possible are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, it can all be, these are all possible strings. Alright? What's a language now? A language is a set or a collection of strings over some alphabet. Alright, we have defined an alphabet to be uh, like a sigma. So over that alphabet, we have different differ a set or a collection of strings. Alright, this uh, this set of collection of strings cons uh, is is assigned to L, which is L is a language consisting of these all strings. So length of the string is zero here. Epsilon defines length of the string to be zero. Uh, we'll discuss more about epsilon in the strings part. So what are operations on strings? The possible operations on strings are the length of a string. Length of a string is nothing but the total number of characters present in a string. So let's consider an example wherein S is a string uh, specifying 7 min steady. So the number of characters here would be S 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 13. S is uh, the length is denoted by the modulus operator. So S equals to 13 denotes that this that the size or length of the string is uh, the 13 all right so what's an empty string an empty string is where the length of a string is zero so such a string is said to be an empty string as i as i said epsilon is uh, in the previous part wherein i specified a language all right so here the length of the string is zero all right here the length of string is one length of string is one length of string is two length of string is two length of string is three so that's what is happening in a language so prefix of a string, let's consider an example where prefix is the number of leading symbols in a string s equals to 7 so epsilon can be possible as s uh, we, we can clearly observe that s can be written as epsilon dot 7, uh, epsilon and 7, epsilon s7 so s, s e, s e v n so, so, so on we'll get a 7 and uh, this is going to be the prefix or all right so what's a proper prefix of a string a proper prefix of a string is any number of leading symbols in the string uh, other than zero all right we are not we are considering we are not considering the empty string and other all possible prefixes the, the same is po the same as prefix of a string but epsilon is not considered as it's an empty string Alright, what's a prophet suffix of a string? Prophet suffix of a string except epsilon, the whole string possible suffixes. So what's a suffix actually? Uh, let's go with the suffix part. So a suffix, let's consider an example. Suffix s equals to 7 means the possible prefixes are these and the possible suffixes are the last parts including the epsilon. Including this epsilon. Alright, so what's a substring? A substring is obtained by deleting prefix and suffix from the string. So let's consider an example being 7 wherein we delete the uh, like the possible prefixes and or suffixes where we get epsilon is a possible substring and 7 
whole as it is a substring, a possible substring. And then we have Eve, where we deleted S and N as the suffixes and prefixes, and EV, EVN, C, and so on. So we can consider a substring to be the possible removal of uh, prefix and suffixes from the string. A proper uh, substring is removal of the epsilon similar to suffix and prefixes. A proper suffix and proper prefix. So what's a concatenation of two strings? Concatenation is denoted by the op dot operator. So the concatenation is nothing but the joining of two strings. It can be done in either way. Alright. So let's consider la operations in languages. As I discussed, a language is a set or a collection of strings uh, uh, in an, uh, over an alphabet. So wha uh, what are the possible operations over languages? The possible operations are union of two languages denoted by capital U. The union of two languages is nothing but the combina combination of every string which, are which is present in L1 or which is present in L2, that is A1, all strings are combined. So an intersection of two languages is uh, denoted by uh, like the reverse U. So what's happening there? Uh, L1 and L2 means X in L1 and Y in L2, alright? So this is the proper definitions of interse intersection and union. So we can consider an example to be like this, A and AC are combined, A and CB are combined, then B and AC are combined, and B and CB are combined. So what's a clean closure? This is another operation possible. A clean closure is nothing but the possible combination of all languages, alright? Including the empty string language, wherein uh, we have the string containing the empty length. Uh, that is, it doesn't have anything, it's null string, alright? So uh, let's what's a positive closure? Positive closure is another operation which is possible. Here a positive closure is denoted by plus and clean closure is denoted by star, which denotes that star, uh, plus is the instance wherein we doesn't have we don't have the epsilon or the uh, empty string. All right. So we are going to the next component, which is regular expressions. A regular expression over an alphabet can be defined as uh, uh, like the siphon, which is um, which is a regular expression for an empty set and epsilon, a regular expression for a null string. And if A is a symbol in uh, like sigma, then A is a regular expression for this symbol. All right. So properties. Uh, so certain properties are union, concatenation and clean closure, which are possible over regular expression. Uh, the union of two regular expressions would be a regular expression. Concatenation of rule, uh, regular expressions would give a regular expression again. Clean closure of two regular expressions is also a regular expression. So we can consider an example wherein we have uh, the algebraic or identity rules for regular expressions. The identity rules are the basic associative, commutative and distributive properties uh, which we consider about every other numbers like uh, real uh, or integers. Here we have just defined it over a regular expression wherein R and S are two regular expressions which give us S plus R. So these are all the possible uh, associative, commutative and distributive properties over uh, the regular expressions. So we have certain meta characters or patterns of regular expressions which define like a particular a particular uh, pattern has certain meanings such as uh, x defines a match with a character dot defines a match with any character except a new line a r star def uh, like def uh, defines the occurrence of regular expression z uh, zero times or more than uh, more than uh, zero times and r plus once or more than that uh, once and uh, question mark is zero or once that's it and uh, and the capital word matches with the beginning of the line dollar matches with the end of the line r1 or r2 uh, either r1 or r2 abc means that abc occur together in a regular expression or a definition of a string and abc in a square brackets defines that abc are any one of these or all of these are present in the regular expression r1 divided by r2 or r1 by r2 defines r1 is followed by r2 or the r regular expression r1 is followed by regular expression r2 and the regular definition is the third most important component to understand the concept of tokens which is d1 uh, specifies or produce r1 which means that d1 
I is a symbol not a part of alphabet which is not uh, like it's out of the alphabet it doesn't it doesn't form a part of the alphabet and R I is the regular expressions regular expression for identifier let's consider an example to understand the concept of regular definitions we have the whole productions related wherein letter defines letter is not a part of the alphabet wherein are uh, all these um, strings or the alphabets are used to define the letter digit is all these alphabets are used to define the digit and digit doesn't form a part carefully observe that digit doesn't form a part of the alphabet for id defines letter in this format letter and letter or digit in this format plus uh, star denotes zero or one times occurrence of this letter or digit and plus denotes that uh, once or more than once occurrence of a letter or a digit and then id denotes this format would be specified like like letter would be denoted like this and uh, letter or a digit would be denoted like this whereas a because like a b or a or b or c occurs in a square bracket a b c means that a b and c occurs in a certain format given so this regular uh, these all productions form a regular definition of a particular language all right like we can define a particular language based on this and using this we can form a particular set which defines the language so thanks for watching the video if you have any doubts you can please mention in the comment section below or you can personally mail me thank you